Okay, we're live. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, scrub ahead until you see something start happening. I usually wait a few minutes and let people kind of gather, come in. So, and I get the other computer set up. So, that's what we're doing here. And we have a fun day because we're going to draw the winner for the scavenger hunt. So, I'm psyched. Hi, Mitzi. Hi, Brenda. You're both on the list. Yeah. Hi, Nancy. Let me get a pop-out chat here. I hate the StreamYard chat. I don't know how Dee Dee deals with it. So right now, if you um, finish the scavenger hunt, tell me right now. But I, I do have um, Mindy and Brenda both on it. Um, let's see. I got Kimberly on it. Kimberly was number two. Hey, Judy. Hi, Sherry. Spring break. Yay. Love spring break. So we had... 24 people notify me, but I think I should get to add my own name to the list because I did finish this time. I'll let you guys decide. Hi, Pamela. I'll read all the names before I do this, so you'll have one last chance in case I overlook something. But I did go through all my messages. I went everywhere to see if anybody had left me any message anywhere. Hi, Terry. Because you look forward to it. I almost want another project, you guys. I was thinking this morning, um, I wouldn't mind doing a zine swap um, or another ATC swap. Because, yeah, now I'm going, okay, what, what are we on to next? I get to add me? I don't think that's fair. I'll put me last. But, yeah, I think 25 people that finished all 100 prompts. Um, is a pretty darn good um, completion rate, honestly. I don't know how many people participated, but I know it was large um, based on just feedback here and there. And there were some of them that I think were really difficult. Um, Kimmy is a good doobie, for real, for real. Um so I put me on the list, but I'm really, I won't take the prize because that just would be so wrong. And I'm like you guys. I enjoy it. Sometimes I feel like I get bogged down, you know, like I spend too much time, but I enjoy it. I, I love doing the layouts. Terry, I've got you on the list as well. You were number three. So, yeah, I I kind of feel like I want another little project or something, whether it's a zine or an ATC swap. I haven't decided yet. The zine was the hardest for you? Yeah, see, that's what I think. Um, Sherry, I'm pretty sure I've got you. If I don't, I will add you. Sherry, I did not have you. Yikes. Okay, well, I'm giving everybody one last chance. Check, 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 double check. Some of them, I'm, I'm afraid I've got, like, um, screen names or something. Or I've got real names and I don't know screen names. So it's just like, Susie, I do have you. <laughs> Um, I went through all my emails this morning. Um, so, Sherry, I just added you. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to flip through mine one more time. Dee Dee's going to be late today. Hi, Terry. I've got Terry Brett on here as well. So, I'm just looking at the list of all the people who finished. So, this is the most we've ever had that actually finished. Dee Dee's always inspiring. She honestly is. Um, 
I, there's nothing she does that does not inspire me. And yeah, I'm watching her do napkins and I'm going, I haven't done napkins in forever. Socks and instructions for sock monkey and elephant. <laughs> um, that's okay, Deb. I'm going to put my email. Um, and I should just say I'm bad at email. Um, but yeah, go ahead and um, write me. And um, we can figure something out. Hi, Nina. Hope I haven't missed anybody. Um, but yeah, Dee always inspires me. Always. Never, ever, ever fails. All right. I, mean, I don't know if I'm too close or too far out. Hell, I don't know. So yeah, just take the that email. And you must put the period after M or it won't go. So... And don't worry about interrupting. That's what Chad is all about. So, but Dee Dee really sets herself up. Like she's doing three journals at a time, and I'm sitting here feeling like, you know what? If I get one done, I'm feeling really good about my bad self. <laughs> and it was funny because she showed her the um, gardening that she did on the weekend, and she sent that early Saturday morning. Well, early for me, you got to remember she's Eastern time and I'm central. So she's always up and out at least in it. Well, I want to say an hour, but it's probably more realistically like three hours before I am. So I'm sitting here drinking my first cup of coffee and she says, look what buddy and I did. And it's just like, you know what? I hate you. I'm barely drinking my first cup of coffee and you've already revamped your entire yard. Hi, dabbler. It's like, why don't you make me feel like a slacker early in the morning? Now I have something to feel good about all day long. <laughs> so, I felt like getting up out of bed, doing the morning things, drinking coffee. I was feeling like a winner. <laughs> I felt like, damn, I'm up out of bed. I'm taking liquids. What the heck? Yeah, and she's revamped her entire yard. So go figure. Hi, Sherry Ann. Anybody in chat who has finished their um, scavenger hunt, let me know now. You're up at 5 a.m. Oh, God. At 5 a.m., I would feel like somebody is torturing me. I used to do that when I worked. I don't have to do that now. Hi, Little Red Wagon. Alexandra. Ray. You're a morning bird. See, I used to be. And the older I get, the less I want to get up. I mean, I love getting up when I get up. But, like, getting up before the sun, I am just so not interested. You didn't finish, but you're going to? Oh, well. Good luck finishing. Hi, April. Thanks for the new subby. So, anyway, we, we're in 10 minutes, and I haven't done anything yet. So, let me go ahead. Um, just... One housekeeping thing, um, somebody had written me after the other day and asked me about the plastic thing that I was using to write with. And I don't know which I was using. God, the color is really weird. Maybe not. Um, and you guys have seen this a thousand times, but they're called lettering guides. And you can buy them in different sizes. And all it does is help you keep your lettering really straight and perfect if you use black letters. I use these in my work forever. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen one store bought that was smaller than an eighth of an inch. So I have, let me see if I can get a piece of black paper or something here so you guys can see this. I cut my own for the smaller lettering out of just... Um, packaging acetate because it's real um, stiff and it won't give. That's why I put the tape here. I cut this one too long. But you can just cut your own. Because last I looked, this, the um, rapid design version of this, this was like 17 bucks. They've really, really gone up. See, Terry, you and I would get along great. 
Hi, CB. You're the only mod here right now. So, yeah, kick those trolls right out. But anyway, you can buy lots of different kinds. Picket makes one. Rapid Design makes one. At work, we used to use these lettering guides for because we needed really, really small lettering because we did all our designs by hand. So I used an erase, eraser shield. The only thing about these is you got to put a little bit of masking tape on the back to lift it up off the paper so that your ink won't spread. So for the person that asked about what I was using to write with, they're lettering guides. I love them. I use them all the time because I'm just that anal. And I'm not even going to apologize for it because it makes me happy. So anybody who's coming to chat, hi. Hi, Brandy. Um, so that's the housekeeping that I had to do. Somebody in, in comments had asked about the lettering guides. I love them. And then... Um, Sunset Carol, a lot of you might remember, I don't, I have a few of these because I lose them all the time. Where is the one? Sunset Carol, and some of you will remember her, actually was quite ingenious. So I want to show her version of it because, um, really, the woman was freaking genius. She made this one, and I taped it. Now I'm going to have to clean it up. But anyway, I taped it. But what she did was so that you could have an infinite number of sizes. She cut this out and then cut it at a diagonal. So that you could move this down. And you weren't stuck with just a few sizes. This girl is brilliant. So this is another design. Um, I use it a lot. But yeah, you, you have an endless amount of sizes this way. So kudos to Sunset Carol. Haven't seen her around in forever. Hope she's okay. Hi Kathy. I miss Sunset Carol too. She was she was really brilliant. She really was. You've been looking for coloring pages on Etsy for hours. Oh no, Brandy. Yeah. Isn't that genius, you guys? Yeah, it's just like, I I wish I had thought of it. I should take credit for it, but I can't because Sunset Carol was freaking genius. Okay. Now. Oh, and the other thing. Um, hang on. I didn't get one of them out. Dee Dee um, showed that paper she's going to send me of the cigar box. I store a lot of my, ooh, I could make you guys dizzy and show you, but I store a lot of my smaller art supplies in cigar boxes, wooden cigar boxes. I used to get them when I go to Mexico because we spent the winters at South Padre Island. So back when it was safe to do so, we went over the border all the time. And so anytime I saw a wooden box, um, a lot of, well, when we first started going, they would just give these away. And then they got really, really smart and um, started charging for them. But they never charged more than, I don't know, five bucks. They were, they were so cheap. So I bought tons and tons of them. And then I turned them into watercolor um, storage. And I make these little trays. And I've done this on stream so you can go back and find. This is the White Knights um, on the top layer. And underneath is the Arteza. And the Arteza cracked real bad. But I have to say they're still good watercolors. But they just crack. Whatever they use for a binder um, is not that great. And the other thing I would say about them is they're a little bit chalky. But the, the colors themselves aren't bad. So that's what I've done with some of my um, wooden boxes, just because I love the wooden box part of it. Um, hi, Peggy. You just lurk away. And then I have these with the glass tops that I've also made. And I think these are the Renaissance. Yeah, these are Renaissance. And I haven't done a cheat sheet for these yet, but I need to. 
Let me double check. No, these are Da Vinci. Never mind. Sorry. I have one of the Renaissance as well. So, and then the cardboard ones that are pretty much readily available, and I'm sure all of you have them. I put pens and pencils and all that um, junk in there. You know what? I would have to say overall, I, I have the high-end um, art supplies and I have the Arteza. And I'm not sure that any of us are doing um, fine art. And if it's just to play as a hobby, I would say the Arteza, there is absolutely nothing wrong with them. Every Arteza product that I have tried has been more than adequate. But I would also say that about the Crayola brand. The Crayola brand, um, colored pencils, for example. They're harder lead, so you have to work a little harder to get them um, blended because you're layering rather than um, combining, right? But for sketching or anything like that, I love the Crayola products. And Dee, Dee was working this morning in one of the Arteza journals. And um, you have cigar boxes but don't have the spaces. I really want to swing you guys over and show you the little. Let me see if I can do it on. I don't think I can do it on this. Thank you. Oh, well, you know what I can do? Hello, I have a telephone. Um, <clears throat> but those are teaser journals. One thing I love about them the paper is not horrible at all not even a little bit but what I love about them is they make this square size and I think this is what about eight by eight or something like that I think it's eight by eight okay that's almost eight and a half by eight and a half eight and three eighths is about what it is but I love these square journals I don't even know what's in this one let's look <gasps> birds <laughs> Okay, these were actually napkins, and then I did a watercolor. Um, I used the napkin as inspiration to um, watercolor the birds. So this is watercolor on the Arteza paper, and you guys, it is not bad at all. This was um, Neocolor Neo 2 in the background, and then just some stenciling on top with it looks like ink I don't remember what I did on top but yeah so I need to work in this more obviously but I love the Arteza um, for the size and the paper is not horrible and this was just some um, watercolor technique experiment so because that's why I bought this I wanted to watercolor in it show off <laughs> CB, you could do that and better. Don't even go there, you goon. So don't be afraid of the Arteza products. I would say they are awesome. All right, I'm going to show you guys the little storage where I keep all the cigar boxes because I use them as um, decoration as well. You use Arteza sketch watercolor paper? Yeah. All right. Let me show you guys. I'm getting my phone out here. To show you guys the little um, cigar box storage. Hopefully you'll be able to see it well. Come on. All right. Can you guys see that? I can put it on Instagram as well. But they're just little shelves that have all the cigar boxes. I'll put it on Instagram. So it's not just storage. It's um, it's like the decoration. You just bought a hundred boxes of Crayola. Well, you'll be sniffing all night, Brandy. Hi, Devin. It's not bad, and you get like 60 sheets and two or three sketches. Exactly. When you order one, you get two. Um, so, yeah, for the money, I just feel like it's not bad. 
Have you tried the Arteza acrylic paint? I have not. Um, I think Dee Dee has. I'm almost sure Dee Dee has. I do have the Arteza um, watercolors. Well, I just showed them. Um, I think I, I have some of the Arteza markers. But yeah, I would say for a new product, they are not bad at all. Hi, Kat. So I hope I remember after I get off today to um to post that if i don't somebody remind me i'm pretty bad when it comes to memory stuff so. i've been wanting to make a little cabinet using lidded cigar boxes like a chest of drawers i've actually seen that debbie um so yeah i mean i think cigar boxes and i have a bunch of the um, cardboard ones as well and I just put like extra pens and pencils and erasers and whatever in those. And they're just stacked up in a cabinet with a label on the end so I can find stuff easy. Because I'm a little goofy when it comes to stuff like that. Okay. Now why you guys are all here. The scavenger hunt. Um, last Wednesday was the last day to get it done. And I did finish mine. And then there's a bunch of other junk in here that isn't scavenger hunt related, but what the heck. Um, so it's fun when all your little boxes are colored in. I'm excited. And I'll do one last flip, and then this bad boy's going away, and you'll never see it again. Hey, Joycey. Hope you guys had a good Easter. Ours was really quiet. We didn't do anything. And I was not kidding this morning at Didi's when I said we had... Um, tuna fish sandwiches because I was getting ready to make dinner and I told Robert I said well I'm gonna go ahead and start dinner and he said well don't make a whole lot I'm not really hungry and I was like I'm not going to all that trouble if you're not hungry so I said I want tuna fish sandwich <laughs> he said that sounds good so we literally had tuna fish sandwich for Easter dinner but I've got the ham and the potato salad and all this stuff in the fridge and we'll probably have it tonight so but yeah, he said he wasn't hungry, which is really unusual for Robert because he's always hungry, always. So while I flip through this, I will try and point out which of the prompts. The coffee stain, obviously. Um, I have a lot of um, cartoon characters spread throughout and quotes, so I've fulfilled that one several, several times. This was a card from a friend. Here's more cards so I just kind of piled them up so that's stuff from a friend this was the um, Dee Dee swap the art card swap fantasy garden so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep them here but then I think oh I don't know if I want to store this book and leave that in there I might have to take those out so yeah I don't know We'll see. And then this one was Favorite Artist, which I chose Mary Englebright. I do love Mary Englebright. I love her black and white checkerboards. I just like her quotes. There's every, I don't like, in, there's nothing I don't like about her. Okay, this was my page of swatches. They're just little paint cards put in miniature envelopes. Here's candy, and there's a zine. Um, this was from Tanya McGuire, so I just stuck that in there. I don't know what this was. I should put what is what they were. Oh, I think this was a page of squares. This is my favorite non-art supply, which is toilet paper and more coffee stains and a maze and postage and cartoon characters and game or something. I don't remember all the prompts, but this may be my favorite page in the whole book. But then I like this Calvin and Hobbes one, too. This was a puzzle. 
walk in dollar store spend a buck get that here's um tea that's my favorite cartoon in the whole world calvin and hobbs because if i'm not a 12 year old boy at times i'm a six year old boy I like the swatch page too. Some of them were just so fun. This was actually a card from Scooby-Doo for my birthday that I just loved. So I had to keep it. So some of the prompts will appear several times. This is my food page. Because you guys can look at that and see how healthy I eat. <laughs> God. I hadn't had Funyuns, honestly, in years. And one day I had such a craving, I just had to go get those. There's calendar, flower, um, quote, and this is also is going to qualify for my, um, what, what was the prompt? The wild card page. This was money and lyrics to a song. Something out of a magazine or whatever the prompt was. Here's my own zine, which was the prompt was the random useless facts. So I did an entire zine. Let's read them one last time. And I stole these off the interwebs. So there you go. The word Samba means to rub navels together. I call it being nasty. A whale's penis is called a dork. <laughs> now I look at all those high school dorks differently. <laughs> I did my own comments after I did it. 10% of the Russian government's income comes from vodka. Holy hangovers. A group of hippos is called a bloat. Uh, I call them a booth full of pretties. Cheese is the most shoplifted food in the world. Really? What about Heath bars? I think it's the mice in the storerooms. That's what I think. Toilet seats are cleaner than your cell phone. Just proves we're all a bunch of disgusting pigs. It is impossible to lick your elbow. You just tried it, didn't you? A crocodile can't stick its tongue out. And I want to know who the hell figured that out. More importantly, why? It's estimated that humans use only 10% of their brains. And that explains pretty much freaking everything. There is a town in Newfoundland called Dildo. I know strangers with that name. <laughs> I See, I crack myself up. 23% of all photocopier faults are caused by the people sitting on them to photocopy their butts. <laughs> These people aren't using even 10%. It is illegal to carry ice cream in your back pocket in Kentucky. <laughs> Whoever made this law isn't using the average 10%. Cows hate country music. Who did this study? I'm pretty sure Waltz Across Texas was number one on the cow hit parade in 1975. Dolly Parton once lost a Dolly Parton lookalike contest. It was an all-male panel. No one looked at her face. <laughs> so that was my zine. That was pretty much fun. I forgot how much fun that was. This was my page of tickets. This is my coloring page. Dee Dee is so cringing when she looks at that. This is dryer lint. And I can honestly promise you that prompt will never be on another scavenger hunt list. That is so gross. Anyway, there's more of the alphabets. I've got that several times throughout. This is my animal page or pet page, whichever it was. I don't. I can't remember what the exact prompt was, but yeah, this is my animal page, my pet portrait gallery. I like this page a lot. You can tell I like pages where everything's laid out very uniform. That's pretty much me. Hi, Almaris. I got you on the list. Dolly failed at being herself, and that's actually true. This is my other candy page, and... Robert eats all these Reese's peanut butter cup. I don't. Here's my circles. The Ghirardelli white chocolate caramel is the best candy on the planet. So in case you're wondering, I did a survey and that is the best candy on the planet. 
Here is, I'm not sure why I put Zippy the Unicorn in here. Probably because I needed glitter. And there's Zippy the Unicorn farting glitter. I did this drawing the day um, Dee Dee and I had Zippy on her channel. More coffee. This is my t-shirt page, the Band-Aid Kid. I explained why I did that last time, but the neighbor across the street from us used to call me the Band-Aid Kid because I was so flat-chested. That's basically it. And then I did just a couple more because I like things that make me laugh. Um, overachiever and proud of it. To save time, let's just assume I know everything. Um, I actually have that t-shirt. My dad bought it for me. Don't trust the mainstream media. They're all fake news. This is my page of white. This was kind of a fun page to do. I did this on stream and it was fun to collect up the white stuff. It's an ugly page, but it was still fun to do. This is more mail from friends. And this is my um, page about a fib. And I chose Zandra. Um, her store is Paint and Paper Studio. And when you order... It's fast. You get great products. And she throws in usually a tag and an extra freebie. So that's my Xandra page. Some of her art. Mm, just stuff out of her package. And I, the words I used was giving. Um, that was CB's word. Um, mermaid, Wendy, and Dee Dee both. Kind is mine. Strong is also CB. CB and I went to Australia with her. And, and I agree with CB. Strongest person I know. Hi, Kathy Arbor. This was Draw Your Breakfast, I think. Is that what it was? I don't remember. But anyway, in my um, manner of healthy eating, this was my breakfast one day while I was watching Dee Dee. Mini donuts, which that packaging ended up back here on my food page, wherever that was. Let's see. Because I actually kept the packaging for that. I don't know where it is. But anyway, yeah, that appears twice. Sonic is my iced coffee that Robert goes and gets me every day. And then the mini donuts. So this was a fun page to do. And I, I actually want to do an entire journal like that. But man, I just can't get myself motivated. Did I say hi, Kathy Arbor? I, can, I don't remember. Hi, Kathy. This is my black and white page. This is Zentangle, which I'm going to do today after I'm finished doing this. And then this is really my, this was my black and white page, which I kind of like. Sarcasm, just another service that I offer, which is also my wild card. This was my page of pink and sewing. I try and, and napkin and stencil. So I try and cram as many things on one page as I can. It's not a rule, but I think we should get bonus points for that. This is my post-it page. All the different kind of um, post-its that I have. And Kim Poulton gave us free advice that day. Never play leapfrog with a unicorn. Monkey see, monkey do. And then um, painted handprints. This was my favorite toy as a child. It I, I'm actually lying here because it wasn't my favorite. Light Bright was my favorite, but Spirograph ranked right up there. The Light Bright was too hard to draw. This was my map. This was blowing ink. This was a bunch of different prompts. But anyway, I made the... Um, my ransom note go with the map and I, I read this last week but anyway uh, my ransom note was we have your monkey if you want to see the monkey again bring tons of paint pens books and money to 374 wedgie way today by 9 p.m. see map and photos so there's the little map where you had to take it and then I did another one too if you want to hear that I read it I think last week so that was my ransom note those are fun to do, actually, cutting out all the letters and stuff. Oh, and along with that, I, I did a little card showing the monkey, that the monkey was still alive as of the day that the ransom note. 
the map is genius. The map was fun. The map was really fun because it's just blown ink. And I don't remember the prompts, you guys. Next year, I'm going to do it different. I will put the prompt numbers on the page, I think. Because when I'm doing them, it makes perfectly good sense. And I remember what I was doing. Um, but yeah, a week later, I have no clue what all the prompts were. This was a paper bag and a receipt and coffee stains and I don't know what all. So anyway, that's from my daily Sonic. This was, um, oh, nature was also back there on that one page. This was a flower, I think a pressed flower. I don't remember. Something transparent. Um a cleanup page because I had cleaned up when I was doing Smack and Dragon with this one and that and the background of this is in fact the cleanup from that. So this is like, even though it's very simple, it's still like three prompts because I try and cram as many as I can on there. Okay. This was my letter to myself and I'll read it one more time. <clears throat> Hey, Boomer. Happy birthday. It was written November 14th, 1956. Happy birthday. Here's what's happening. Dwight Eisenhower has been elected president. Congress has passed the Interstate Highway Act, which you will use a great deal. The first hard drive was invented by IBM. Your future husband will start his career with them. The Olympics were held in Melbourne, Australia. You will visit there one day, a once-in-a-lifetime trip. Enjoy it. You will live in a time of great prosperity and love. Never take it for granted. There will be loss, but you will endure and prosper. You're a lucky girl. Here's to happiness. JMY. So that was my letter to myself. This was the feather. There's also circles. There's stamping. Um, that's the pen that I ordered because Dee Dee got it, so I had to. So I like this page um, and I did watercolor this on stream. Clear pockets. Yeah, use clear pockets. They're awesome. And then these are the miniature greeting cards. Daylight savings time sucks. I obviously did that one daylight savings time because I was not happy. Hey, hope you're having a good hair day. Keep on skating into spring. Offended, are you? You should hear what I keep to myself. Be sarcastic and I'll love you forever. And smile for no good reason at all. So some are kind of rude and some are pretty nice. But those were the miniature greeting cards. And then behind there is the coupons. This was junk mail. Arp sends me crap all the time. All the time. This was also art from a fib. Tanya sent me that, I think. I'm pretty sure it was Tanya. Okay, this is what we did last week. This is the five senses. This was fun. And you guys, I went back and um, read the chat from when I was doing this, drawing the eyes and the, all, just creating this page. Honestly, you guys had me just dying over the ears. But yeah, this is the five senses page. Who would think? Cracks me up. Cracks me up. That was a fun page. This was something repaired. And something else, I don't remember what. This is my place I want to visit. And some of you may recognize the stamp. Or the flag. It's the flag of Norway. And then this was finger painting. This was also art from a friend. Art from a friend. Um, this was something orange. I got this. This was also junk mail that I went ahead and colored. But the, the envelope was orange. It's stamping. And then inside are some of the other prompts like... Um, Unknown words. Um, 
letters from friends. So, yeah. The orange envelope will stay with the scavenger hunt until my kids put it in the dumpster when I die. And then I don't know. Um, oh, stickers, butterflies. I don't remember what all these were, but I just went ahead and decorated up the orange envelope. And then this monkey, inappropriate behavior makes me laugh. That doesn't go in here, but I've just been keeping it in here. And then this is just junk. And then back here was um, the list of people who finished. So I'm going to give everybody. Oh, and then these are the, um, the pop top. Safety pin, chain, button. So all of them, um, and then this tie itself was actually in a box of stuff from Lena. So it also fulfilled a prompt. So, yeah. All hundred are in there. They are crammed in there. This thing is so fluffy. Um, but I like it. I had a ton of fun doing it. And I'm going to look forward to doing it again next year. Which, knowing me, I probably will. Because then I don't have to think about what I'm going to do New Year's Eve. I already know. So there's the scavenger hunt journal. Done, done, done. Hey, Lena. I got you on the list, girl. I want to get a new one if there's any more of them. Want to get a new one what? Oh, you love light bright? I like light bright too. So anyway, let me read off the people who are on the list. Um, I'm going to read off what was given to me. I don't know oftentimes if it's a screen name or if it's their real name. So um, I'm, I'm going to have difficulty tracking this person down, right? Whoever wins. Okay, but these are the people that finished. Katrina. Kimberly557, Terry Lutz, Mom and Son, and I'll be able to find her at Dee Dee's. Kim Poulton, Peggy Fitzmorris, Tanya McGuire, Ann Lair, Val Rosentreter, Mindy, Mindy Mitz. Did I get her? Did I put her twice? No. Mindy Mitz, Deb, Bis Deb which is Bissup, Terry Brett, Lena, Susie Bratu, 3G Brenda, or G3 Brenda, Lala Gamma, that's another one. She's, I, I don't know her well, don't know her real name, so yeah, I'll have trouble finding her as well. So if you're the winner, get a hold of me. <laughs> Norma Weedmeyer, which is Branson Limo, um, Debbie Riddick, Joan Niegler, Julie Topaz, Lisa Conway, Lori Way, Susie Bratu. Oh, I got her twice. Oh, man. So I need to make Sherry number 23. Um, Elmeris, which her name is Joanna, and me and Sherry Habing. So Lori Way is Lala. Oh, so I've got her twice, too. Holy crap. Lori Way. All right. All right. So let me renumber these. 21, 22, 23, 24. So 24 of a fit. 24 of us finished. Some no Lala Gamma. Okay, cool. Yeah, see, um, my teenage parents just called coming home from spring break. Awesome, Kimberly. I want to be like your parents when I grow up. So, yeah, we had 24 that finished, which is, I think, the best we've ever had. Well, I'll be able to get a hold of Lala then because she sent me an email so I can get a hold of her. And I think in the future I'm going to um, have you email me. Because a lot of you I see in chats and you tell me, oh, I finished. But then I won't have your name or address, you know, like, yeah. So, yeah, Kimberly, I think I'm the same way. Can't wait to catch up on 
Lena's stream. I was so ticked when I saw I missed it. I was like, you know what? That's it. I am going to turn on notifications because I turn off all, I mean, I get notices, but they don't go ding, ding, ding because my um, phone was dinging all the time. Annoyed the hell out of me. So, yeah, I turned off the, but then I missed something that I want to see and then I'm mad. So, and I have to say that um, I want to give special mention to Elmaris because she wrote the funniest story about her dryer lint. So, um, honestly, Elmaris, that was too good. And um, you want to see the wanted poster. Wanted. What number prompt is it? Yeah, tell me what number the prompt is and I'll be able to find it. Because I just put the page numbers next to each of them. So if you can find the wanted poster, let me see here. Oh, see like page five. This was also the rusty page. So a lot of the prompts I didn't say. There's a video of mine on my channel. Okay, Sherry. Cool. Oh, Lena said she identified. Oh, by the wanted poster. Okay, okay. I thought it was on in here. So I was going to say, I don't remember doing a wanted poster, but I know I finished all of them. So anyway, yeah, congratulations to all the people who finished. Um, kudos to you. We will probably be doing another one next year, and we just have to figure out what project is next. Now that you saw the idea, you can't wait for New Year's Eve. Well, let's don't wish the year away. So, okay, I did that note. But there were so many people, honestly. If you go on um, Instagram and search hashtag scavenger hunt 2020, I think, um, you can see people's entries on this. And honestly, some of them are so good. Everybody did such an amazing job that the last three months going on Instagram for me has been just so much fun. Seeing what you guys came up with, with the different prompts. Y'all are amazing for real. So I have the list. I'm going to give you guys one more minute to tell me if you um, finished, I'll get you on the list. Hi Janice, please not more than a hundred next time. That was hard. We really went the limit because remember originally it was like 70 and then we went to a hundred but some of them are so easy you could just like slap the stuff down really easy right okay Devin go have a great afternoon who was the one that wanted a hundred I don't know Brenda I think we got doing it on stream and it just kept growing and growing so it was just like we should have cut it off maybe i'll only do 75 next year all right here's random.org and i'm gonna put in let's see what i say there's 24 so we're gonna go from one to 24 everybody gets their own numbers somebody is definitely gonna win so Ready, set, go. Number 10 is the winner, and it's Mindy Mitz. Mindy Mitz is the winner. And Mindy Mitzy, and I think I have an email from you, so I can um, contact you. Let me highlight you so I know that you are the winner, but I can always come back. So congratulations, Mindy Mitz. And the prize actually is an Amazon gift card in the amount of 50 bucks. So I will be, I, I have your email. 
I will email you that this afternoon. So you will be getting a $50 gift certificate or gift card for Amazon. So you can buy yourself something that you want. And hopefully I, I went back and forth and on the amount and the how, you know, whether or not I should do one of the watercolor boxes or what I should do. Um, and I just felt like it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of stick to it. And I want somebody to have something they really want. So that's why I decided, ah, I bit my tongue. Um, that's why I decided to do it that way again this year. So congratulations, Mindy. And thanks to everybody for playing. It was so much fun. It was easy for me because if I didn't have something planned for my stream, I could always just do a scavenger hunt page. Now I'm going to have to go back to work. So congratulations, Mindy. I'm happy for you. And I think you've done it multiple years. So you are like so entitled. And Julie Topaz actually should get special mention too because she has finished it all four years. I think she's the only one for certain that I know has finished it all four years. So, yeah. All right. So scavenger hunt is in the book <clears throat> and then the other thing um, kind of project that I've been hosting um, is doing monthly Zentangle prompts and I did right after um, last week's stream I did go ahead and post the April Zentangle prompts um, so if you don't if you want to play along just go to my Instagram and every month since I don't even know when I started. Was it November or December? Yeah, November, I think, was the first month I did the prompts. Um, and yeah, here we are, April. So I just posted it and I did go ahead and make sure I have all my cards. I'll pull out my Zentangle notebook real quick so you guys can see. If you're new to Zentangle... I've done it for years and years and years, and I enjoy it, and I find it relaxing. Um, today I'm going to work on the poster that's going to replace the cover of this book. Let me pull out a little bit so you guys can see. Sorry for the glare. It's the overhead light. The way I store my Zentangles is alphabetical in this binder using baseball card sleeves. And so when I look them up, and the website that I look them up on is tanglepatterns.com. Do you look up the Zentangle prompts? That's what I'm just talking about, Joycey. The, the prompt for every month is on my Instagram. And then to find the individual patterns and how to draw them is on tanglepatterns.com. Or just Google it, and it's going to take you either to Pinterest or somewhere where you can find them. But then I make these little cards that shows the step outs. And when you go to tanglepatterns.com and look up the individual prompt, it's going to show you exactly how to draw that Zentangle. So just because I'm a hoarder, I go ahead and keep those. I know I can go on the website and get them again, but... I like having these. So, yeah, and this whole book is just full of Zentangle. And then what I, well, one month, I don't remember what month it was, I did the design on the card and, and did it more like a miniature finished piece of art. I really like this, and I may go back to doing this. I don't know, because I like having them in my book. Like, this one sits right here. The step out is behind it, but wouldn't it be fun to have a whole book of just, like, the actual designs? Thank you, Susie. Your dad brought back two coloring books. 
Yeah, everything in this whole book, other than the baseball sleeves, is homemade. So, um, but I'm going to tell you guys, one of the problems with doing it this way is when you add prompts or add patterns, if you keep them alphabetical, a lot of times you have to move the cards. So another way I thought that would be fun to um, store your Zentangle prompts is on a Rolodex. I almost wish I had started doing it on a Rolodex. So if you have one of those and you want to store your patterns, that may be a really cool way to keep it. Sorry, I have to trim my nail because I got a... It's broken a little bit and it was catching on everything. Sorry. So anyway, this is how I keep mine. But I would honestly recommend doing them on... Rolodex cards, because then alphabetizing, keeping them, finding them would be so, so easy. Thanks, Tambit. So, yeah, I think I showed you guys here. I don't know when. Um, that for the March prompts, I had started doing a poster, which is going to... Um, actually be the cover of this notebook and I haven't finished it um, let me see the March prompts let me see where I'm at just looking just looking oh but it has this um, it has a fly sheet on it that gives the name of each of them but it actually looks like that so thanks CB been thinking of doing it for April. Get on it, Joycey. Yeah, I could photocopy these and put them on a Rolodex, and um, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm not doing it. I've, I'm too far in. That's the problem, is if you're just starting, and it might not, not be too much trouble, um, that's what I would recommend. But... Yeah, I'm too far into this format to go back and change it now. So let me find out where I left off. Let's see, there's Diva Dance. See knots. I'm just sun. Ta-da. Maybe I did get them all. No, I stopped at Zenith, I guess. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this and do the rest of the March ones and however far in April. Mint the cards in your folder. Yeah, I, I, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Thanks, Dabbler, but I just don't see myself doing that. All right, I think I got up to Zenith. So let me get out. Where is there? I'm going to draw directly off my um, tablet. I probably have. Let's just look how well my system's working. <laughs> I think I already have the card for Zenith. Okay, there's the one for Zenith. So I don't have to look it up. There's my card for Zenith. Let's draw that one. Nope! <laughs> the whole notebook just about dumped over. Oh man, what a mess that would have been. Hi Val. Thanks. You're welcome. We'll do another one. And if you guys can think of um, another challenge you want to do, like a, I'm really wanting to do a zine or um, trading cards again. So let's pick a spot and I'll bring you guys down real close so you can watch. 
there's really no rhyme or reason um, how I put these down here, except that I try not to get two really dark ones next to each other. I try and kind of balance out the weight of the art. Um, this one, if I don't do anything in the shape itself, it's going to be real light and airy, much like, say, this one. This one is real light and airy. This one's light and airy. Um, this one is pretty light. So this one is very dark. So I think I'm going to do this one down here. Um, this one's kind of medium. So it just depends. Sometimes, depending on um, how complex it is, because you guys know I'm a little bit anal, um, and Zentangle is supposed to be relaxing, right? But for me, for it to be relaxing, if, for example, let's use this one as an example. If it's intended to have straight lines, I have to use a ruler, you guys. <laughs> Okay, bye, Deb. Um, yeah, I have to use a ruler on these. So, but that makes it relaxing for me. Um, otherwise, I just freehand it. But if it if it has to have some straight elements, I will draw the grid. I really will, just because I'm that sick in the head. And. I'm not going to apologize for that. So this one, if you look at the pattern, um, it doesn't really have any straight lines. It's going to look fine just freehanding it. So I'm just going to go ahead and freehand it. Another thing I pay attention to when I'm doing it is the nib of the pen. Um, sometimes I, real, I use a real, real thin nibs or skinny nibs, small nib. And then sometimes I just want like medium weight. This one I did medium weight. Because I just thought it would look better. But, yeah, that's just how goofy and anal I am. Don't be like me. Just saying. So we'll get multiples done today. Because I'm going to do this one and this one. And I think I will do it curved. Just because. All right, now it will get quiet. Can you guys see okay? A lot of these look to be really complicated, and they're not at all. There's not one of them that any one of you can't do. Another thing I've been doing when I draw the patterns um, is I've been doing them in my beast. Just, yeah. Okay, here's this one. I didn't actually finish this one, but this is the same design in my beast. So, but really, even that one, that's so simple. I will actually draw that one um, so that you guys can see, even though it looks so complicated, literally anybody can do that. So stay tuned, man. Just don't be intimidated. To me, this is so relaxing. This is bigger than I've drawn it other places, but that's okay.
and I don't know about you guys, but the weather here is getting so gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Hi, Lisa. Um, yeah, we are definitely in spring trees. The um, blooming trees are, um, are all out in bloom. They're gorgeous. Um, the grass is getting green. The rat has had to um, mow a couple of times now, which is very cool. Um, I'm pulling up this pattern to show you guys. I, I think this woman, when she did this, she um, shows different ways to um, embellish. So it's a lot of times it's not just one design. It can be as elaborate as you want to make it. So I'm going to go ahead and make my circles a little bit bolder. Just to give it a little bit more interest. And I hope I'm not confusing. Sometimes you get a, they'll do it on um, YouTube or usually it's on a website or a blog post. So let's see if this woman did. There she shows the basic design. All right. And then she shows different ways that you can use it to make it look different using the exact same strokes. So, um, yeah, take a look. You're supposed to hit 96 CB. Oh, my gosh. Thanks, Lisa. They are pretty intricate. If Janet decides to do an APC challenge swap, I think I'm doing Zentangle on mine. Well, Brenda, we could actually do that if you want. That would maybe be fun. Just do a Zentangle ATC swap. You guys want to do that? We'll see how many people are interested in. And we could do it more like Didi where you don't have to do 10 of them, where you just do like three or something. What do you guys think? Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what you're thinking. Because, yeah, I, I think I'm going to feel a little bit of a void without the scavenger hunt to be working on. But we can all do like a napkin journal like Dee Dee. I have one started. I don't work in it often. But the thing I like about that is you get to use all your cool supplies. All right. And I think on this one... I'm just going to use cross hatching on the little nubs that are going up just to give it some additional weight so it's not quite as light and airy. But one of the things that makes Zentangle look really cool is when you add the shading. In my humble opinion. And Brenda, if other people don't want to do it, just you and I could do it too. Hang on, I'll read chat in just a second. We'll take a poll in chat and see how many people would be interested in doing that. I wouldn't mind hosting it. I got nothing better to do except in the next, let's see, it's almost April, middle of April. Um... Yeah, the only thing I've got to do is, um, hi, Rachel. I'm in on a Zentangle swap. I'm in. Okay, we've got Lena and Southwest Michigan. So unbelievably nice. 80 on Wednesday. Oh, wow. That is crazy, Brenda. If we did it, maybe do five to exchange plus one for the host, so six all together. That's a good idea. Elmaris is in. All right. If we get 
looks like we're going to get 10 or so people. I would like some um, new people who don't normally do stuff like that to join in too. And a lot of these that look like border designs, a lot of times I just repeat them. to fill in the whole square because the thing is again there's no rules you get to decide so alright sounds like we're getting some interest I think we've got a plan and we don't have to give it a short deadline I mean I won't give it a never ending deadline but we don't have to have them done next week, right? You do a Zentangle swap. Devin, I'm sure, would probably be in. So it looks like we've got at least 10 that are here that would do it. All right, Barbara, great. Diana would do it. All right. Yep. I think we've got a plan. All right. So I let's just work out the... Um, details in our heads right now you would get to I think the size should be more on the order of ATC cards which is two and a half by three and a half because then if you do store yours like mine because it, it is really all about me I don't give a crap what you guys think it really is um, then you could keep them in your Zentangle book you get to choose your own designs you can use as many or as few as you want. Um, what other things would we have to know? We'd have to give it a long enough deadline so that international peeps um, could play, right? Because I think the whole male situation is better, but I don't know. Um... Has anybody been getting international mail? I haven't, so I don't know. All right, oh, two and a half by three and a half, okay. Could it be on the two and a half in, in circles? Sure, Barbara. Yeah, if you got PayPal, I can send the return postage via PayPal. For you, Lena, you don't have to worry about it. I can take care of it. You got a package from Germany. Will you list the rules? Yeah, when I finalize it, which probably I, I'll finalize it and um, make the announcement next week. You might be able to do that. would be great, Janice. Hi, by the way. It took about a week. Okay. So it looks like the international mail issues maybe have um, gotten themselves resolved. I hope so. Because um, that was just crazy. Like getting Christmas cards in March was just ridiculous. There's no excuse for that. Maybe it wasn't March. I think Dee Dee got one. Well, it was after her birthday. So it took over two months. All right. We have got a plan. We're going to do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll say two and a half by three and a half, but if you want to do a two and a half inch circle, like a coin, that would be good. You're going to use your eight inch by five and a half inch Strathmore for tangles. That would be great, Joycey. Don't worry about it. Look, another thing is, like, if I pay the postage and you guys want to reimburse me or whatever, yeah, we can just do PayPal because I have a PayPal tip jar. Um, it's on the banner page of my um, 
channel so you can always find it. All right. This is just a um, number two pencil. I usually use about that for the shading. Unless I want really dark, in which case I get a, um, a B pencil. But usually for the shading, a number two or an HB pencil is more than adequate. And then I'll show you a blending stump here in a minute. I find them to be very helpful regardless what I'm drawing. If I need to smear graphite, they're great tools, great tools. I probably prefer black and white Zentangles, but um, I'm not going to put rules on it that you can't use color or something like that. If you want to Zentangle on top of jelly prints or something like that, that could be cool. So, yeah, whatever works for you guys. Okay, International Mail. Sent a parcel February 6th from Niagara Falls, Canada. Arrived March 13th in Chicago. Sent one the 28th and it got there in five days. Oh my gosh. So there you go. Just when you think things have improved, take that. Okay, this is a blending stump. Um, it's just rolled up paper. You can buy them anywhere. They're on Amazon. They're, they're pretty inexpensive. They have gone up though, I have to say. Um, used to be these things were just like throwaway. You could just them away they were so darn cheap they have gone up I was surprised last time I bought them okay yeah so that one's not bad and indulge me while I do my anal stuff. I don't want to have to go back and look later what pattern pattern this was, so I'll just write it right now. To draw that, I used a um, Pigma Micron, the plastic nib. Um, but I still do love either this set yeah I'll get mailing address and everything out there um, these Copic multi-liners oh you guys they're the best but I also use a lot um, the Pentel hybrid Technicas the 03 is actually my favorite pen on the planet so yeah I like the Copic multi-liner and the microns because they don't smear and when you're using a um, paper stub and or a tortillion um, I don't want the black ink to smear so that's why I tend to use those pens thanks all right Zenith the other one we got I'll um, file these later the next one is called ONS, O-N-S. You know what? This was like one of my least favorite Zentangles. Um, I don't know why. I just didn't find it that much fun to draw. I'm going to include it, but yeah, I just I didn't find it all that appealing really. Partly, and because I've done it for so long, I kind of know how certain designs are going to work. Um, and this one, I just don't see it really working. So I'm probably going to do more on the order of this. Um, when you draw the lines close next to each other, they call it echoing. I'll probably do something like that because I, I'm just not really crazy. This one's not bad, but... 
yeah, I think I like that one. So because it's not my favorite, I'm going to put it in a small place. <laughs> It was fast. Yeah, they are pretty fast. This one I'm just going to freehand. No, now I'm sitting here second guessing myself. I'm doing upside down S's because to me it just helps you keep your spacing about the same in that one I did one of them I did backwards so my bad now I'm fixing it Yeah, I don't, this is not my favorite design. And one of the rule the the people who um, created Zentangle, they're not crazy about yeah. See how stupid that is. Um, flower patterns necessarily, um, and I can understand why they're hard to put into designs. So, and I am failing miserably at this one. All right, I think I got it right this time. There we go. Just do it however you want it. Sorry, I got quiet. Actually, on this one, I am having to think more than normal. Usually, I don't have to think at all about them. Bad. Hey, Julie. I did draw the borders. Actually, the borders it are is one of the designs for March. It was called Frames. Um, if you're coming in late, Mindy Mitts won the scavenger hunt um, giveaway. So congrats to Mindy Mitts. I think she's participated for several years. And then, then this one just because I don't like the design that much, I'm going to go ahead and I don't remember if the circle design in the background is called pebbles or stones or something, but it's a good fill in pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and just add it real quick. Just a bunch of circles in different sizes.
And this is the part that I find really, really relaxing is just like, I think because I used to do it in school, like I'd be sitting listening to a lecture and I'd be doodling the whole time. And they actually have done studies now and found out that if you draw um, what you're hearing or are drawing while you're listening to something, you retain it better. Hi, Lane. Um, so, yeah, I was way ahead of the curve, I guess, because I sat and drew endlessly on peaches. I've always been a huge doodler. I wish I had kept some of those old drawings and stuff. Of course, I did, a lot of my stuff got ruined in a, a basement flood. Um, but yeah, I'd like to see what I used to draw. I just remember doing it. I was going to watercolor today, and I probably will next week. Um, but I'm going to have to practice because, God, it feels like so long since I started a project from beginning to end. I thought, man, I'm going to have to practice a little bit. probably forgot everything I knew because I put everything away before the kids came. So, yeah, I haven't gotten a lot of it back out yet. I did give you a special mention, Julie, for having participated and completed four years of the um, scavenger hunt. And I don't know, I can't think of another person who has participated and finished all four years. Because I can't even say that. I didn't finish mine last year. I don't know why. And this year, I kind of wondered if I was going to, because there were a few that I, I just kept putting off and putting it off. Yeah. I'm going to back to tell all those teachers they should not have cracked my knuckles for doodling. See, there you go, Rachel. Yeah, they say that drawing, like even in business meetings, drawing um, either content, what you're talking about, or even just doodling, your retention is better. So there you go. Go figure. So one thing I would say is they didn't show the tangle like this, but do whatever you want to make it your own. Like nobody's going to come over and smack you in the head and say, that's not what I intended. Make it your own. So I turned these into a bunch of flowers. Um, not my favorite for sure, but it's tucked up in the corner. Who cares? You didn't like the pattern until you add the pebbles. See, that's just it. I think you... Um, and then the shading. The shading always makes such a big, big difference. Like I could shade around the flowers. I'm just going to shade the center of them to give them a little bit of depth. But it's there on the edge, so who cares? I'm actually excited for spring. Um, I'm going to go get... Um, 
my tomato plants pretty soon. They say don't plant them until May, and I'm not sure that they really go gangbusters um, before then because tomatoes especially need heat to do really well. But yeah, I'm excited to go ahead and get my tomatoes and stuff like that. Okay, that was a small area. The next one is Ballas, B-A-L-L-A-C-E. I'm going to see if I have a card. I make a card even on um, patterns that I'm not crazy about and maybe will never draw again. I'm not sure why. Oh, this one I actually like. But I do. Here's the card. And this one again, it looks like a um, like a border pattern, but you can just fill in the whole space with it. So, and look, it it starts out a lot like the one here, the zenith one, but you end up with something so different. So, gonna make start making raw. Rami, um, that's on the April list, isn't it? McRami, yeah, it's number one, on, and I'll I'll get to that one in a minute. Uh oh, you know what? Look at, I had actually started this one and must have gotten. Oh, I'm glad I saw that. I must have gotten sidetracked because I've already drawn part of this. Yay me! <laughs> And you'll be surprised um, that you don't have to be real um, precise and it will still come out. And one thing I would recommend is get um, pens with different size nibs so when you have to color in areas, you know, you've got a bigger nib. It'll just make life easier for you. And I don't do really any cleanup on these. Whatever happens is what happens and I'm okay with it. I'll obsess about Dee Dee's napkins being all disorganized. Okay, to color this in, and the reason I thought that is because I'm going to look for a pen with a little bit bigger nib. Here's another plastic nib one. I didn't know I had multiples out. Where did I put my 08? Oh well, I'll get the micron copies out. And get the bigger nib. The biggest I have in it is 7. The nice thing about these pens, I've talked about them the last few times I'm, I've streamed because I'm so completely in love with them. The nice thing about these pens is you can um, replace the nibs and I haven't had to do it on this one yet. Yeah.
Well, I can't get this one out. I'm going to have to get a tool or something. But anyway, you just pull this out and replace the ink cartridge. So that's one of the really cool things about these is you're not rebuying the pen every time. You just can replace the nib. And I'm really bad about crushing the tiny nibs. So for a buck or so, I can actually make the pen last. And I'm cool with that. And I think the thing I like best about them is you can get a lot of different waterproof pens. And these are completely waterproof and smear proof. Um, the weight of them, the weight of the pen just feels so darn good in your hands. And it's an aluminum barrel. Check and chat. Hi, Dorothy. You can go and stand all those napkins up on it and put them in color sequence size. See, Rachel, that's what I'm about. I would have them standing up on end so you could flip them and the fold part would be up so that you didn't have all those raggedy edges to deal with and you wouldn't be just pawing through the whole thing. That drives me crazy. And then by color, that would be nice. I don't I I think that could work. Oops, I'm going to use a smaller nib. All right, now I lost my other pen. And I drew these kind of close together so I had less um, space in between the designs. But you can leave as much as you want because you could put another tangle in there. You could blacken it. You could shade it, you know. And I don't always. This is blue. No wonder it looks weird. Um, who did I, how could you lose a pen in two seconds? That's what I want to know. I do that all the time. <laughs> Gotta be here. There it is. You just ate a lovely cream tea. <sighs> I am gonna well maybe just thinking 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 you got to plan a little bit ahead but not a whole heck of a lot And I do this, you know, straight lines going up and down. You could do this on a curve, in a circle. Yeah, just got to be inventive.
Another thing I did was, um, I've heard it a few times, I'll show it again real quick. Because that book that I showed you where I keep all my patterns is pretty bulky, and it, it's gotten bulkier. I've had to expand its bolt, um, binder a few times. But I've been collecting patterns literally for years, so that's probably not unusual. Um, I did make a photocopy, and I think I sent one to Jen. I did a giveaway. Let me, hopefully it's here in the, right next to me, and I won't have to go in search of it. Because I don't take that notebook like out in the living room if I'm going to um, tangle out there or something. So I made this little, um, it's like a matchbook fold. And then took photocopies of a lot of the patterns. Some of my favorites. This isn't by all of them by any stretch of the imagination. And usually the last... Um, image on the card is the finished design. So I would just take photocopies and I laid these out on eight and a half by 11 inch sheets and then photocopied them and went back and added the names so that I could make this book. So it's like a little travel um, book. So I could do it in the car or um, whatever. Yeah. So that was, I kind of like this idea because when I want to go out and draw on the couch or something, I can just take this and um, have at least ideas. Maybe Denise came in for a cleanup when you turn your head. <laughs> The tangle name is Asgard. I probably have that. I'll look. Let me finish this one real quick. The names of some of these are pretty funny. And it's, it's interesting when you go to the site and then go read people's blog posts about how they created a pattern or something. A lot of times they'll see a window, um, a gate, just something in real life, a, a repetitive pattern. In fact, one of them coming up, um, I think she saw it on a table. It was part of a table design. And then she went ahead and turned it into a tangle pattern and did the breakdown so you could see the easy way to um, draw it. People are very inventive. And see this one by drawing it um, close together. I'm actually joining the two rows. You don't have to do that. And these are by no means precise at all. Did you make that fold out for the designs or where did you get it? Um, the matchbook fold, the match, I just made up the matchbook fold. I mean, it's a fold that's out there in the world, right? Matchbooks are like that. But yeah, I make match back, matchbook folds for a lot of things. In fact, in my scavenger hunt book, I did one, let me grab it out real quick. I did another one. You can do this for a lot of different things. I did the matchbook fold out for some designs for um, my foreign exchange student. She wanted to see how to draw some flowers. So I just made her a little book like this because it binds it real nice, keeps it in one little thing, and its cover and everything stays part of it. So here's just a little book of dominoes, but it's the same exact sort of design. It's just a matchbook, matchbook fold, and all it is is figuring out the map. So if you want to see me, I sent you one, Dorothy. Yeah. 
yeah, I've done this a lot of different times. And the thing is, like on this one, I obviously had to do the dominoes before I could um, determine the size of the matchbook. But they're fun little gifts. So if you want to see how to come up with the design, I'll, I can show you that. It's um, it's really simple, actually. And you can make it custom size depending on what you're going to put inside it. You could make it, if you had the um, cover sheet large enough, you could make it 8.5 by 11 inches. I mean, there's no size limitation. Of course, if you get too big, it gets a little unwieldy, but who cares? Right? Just finishing it off there. Now I have to decide. I'm going to have to go back and read your chat, Janice. All right. So, I mean, I could finish that there if I wanted. Now I have to decide. I think I'm going to go back. No, I'm not. I'll just do like I did the last one. I'll just shade. Um, you know, if I shade around the circles, then it gets more testy. So I think I'll shade. This area. And then I don't have to work around the little small elements, but that's entirely up to you. You decide. I just add this. Um, this one doesn't have any natural shading, like. Like, for example, this one didn't either. So I shaded around it so it looks like it's casting a shadow underneath it. But some tangles um, have just natural shading, you know, where it's apparent where your shading is going to go. Like this one was the center of the flowers, the ends of the flowers. Makes it look like they're rounded. Um, this one does not. So I'm just going to add the shading in these areas just for a little bit more interest, I guess. And you don't have to be real careful because you're going to use your paper stump to smear it out. Right? And you can definitely tell that it's getting summer. There's more and more people coming to the lake, much to my dismay. On one hand, like yesterday, it was really, well, maybe it was Saturday. But either way, um, the sun, when the sun came out in the morning and I went out just to kind of see what the day was like, there was like three boats out in our cove. And it was kind of cool and brisk, and they were just out there fishing. And after this last year where we've been stuck in the house, especially over the winter, um, it just made me happy to see people out enjoying the little things in life, right? I mean, I say I, I hate people coming to the lake, but that's just because they're inconsiderate. But, like, to see people out enjoying, that made me really happy. Okay, so 
just made it a little bit more interesting. Holy crap, that matchbook is amazing. Maybe you could show us how someday if you haven't yet. I will. I will make myself a little note and show how to make matchbooks. Maybe I'll do it next Monday. I'll figure out. Well, I could actually do some Zentangles or something to put in and then do a giveaway or something. Okay, next one up. I'm not crazy about that one either, but it's not horrible. Just not crazy about it. I think I would have liked it better if rather than put circles in there, I'd have put like loops. But who cares? All right. That was Ballas. And then the last one for last month was, I think you pronounce it Irimon. I-R-I-E-M-O-N. But all of these um, names are on my IG. So if you want to see how any of these are drawn, just look um, on IG. And you can get the whole list. Okay, here's this one called Irimon. I love this pattern. It's so simple. And when you guys see it, you're just going to go, oh my gosh, that's so simple. And it looks so intricate and it shades amazingly. Hey, Lady Jan. I'm going to have to, I'll look it up right now. Janice, you made that one up and submitted it. QRS. Okay, I haven't looked it up. I'm going to look it up right now. And it's on tanglepatterns.com, Janice. So one of our very own people is freaking famous. I love that. Tina, did I say hi to you? I hope I didn't miss anybody. Hi, Joey. Um, looking it up, Janice. On my little thing here. And the, the website, tanglepatterns.com, it's so easy to navigate, you guys. Um, this um, alphabet in pink up near the top is how you navigate it. And it's so darn easy unless you're me and then I, you break everything. <laughs> oh, come on. That's no. Don't watch what I'm doing here because I'm breaking everything. And then I choose B. <laughs> Little screams, you just got here, you didn't miss me. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm going to go look it up right now. And depending on... Um, How hard it is, I will draw it. Make a little card for myself. Wouldn't you know it's on the very last page. Upper right is the search box. Yeah, I know. I just usually go. Um, there it is. Oh, cool, Janice. Janice Johnson's Zentangle. Um, when you go, they've written a little thing about today's easy Monday tangle results from a recent scroll through my, through my tangle submission archives. Asgard is by Janice Johnson of Kansas city and her first tangle on the site. And then Janice wrote, sorry, Janice, hope you don't mind that I'm doing this. 
After I retired, I decided to revisit doodling, something I had done eons ago. While looking at different artists on the internet, I stumbled across something called Zentangle. That was my journey too, Janice. Then down the rabbit hole you go. After watching a few videos by Rick and Maria, they started the whole Zentangle craze. I did more research and found your website. This was in February 2013 and haven't looked back since. This method has given me a whole new way to look at the world around me. Isn't that the truth, Janice? And see the patterns everywhere. While watching the movie Thor, I saw this pattern in the wall in one of the scenes and thought that would be a neat Zentangle design. My daughter suggested I call it Asgard. Not familiar with the movie, I did a little research on IMBD, IMDB. The powerful but arrogant god Thor is cast out of Asgard to live amongst humans in Midgard, which is Earth, where he soon became becomes one of their finest defenders. As is usually the case, a Wikipedia informs us more about Asgard. So, yeah, in Norse religion, I thought that was a um, Nor Norwegian word, is one of the nine worlds and home to the Aesir tribe of gods. Odin and his wife Frigg are the rulers of Asgard. One of the Asgard's well-known locations is Valhalla, in which Odin rules. See, so it's not just drawing. You can actually, like, get smarter as ha a result of having done this. And then she's broken out the pattern. And it's pretty simple, but, I mean, you can use it so many different ways. Look at that. That is so cool. Sorry I was off screen there, you guys. I'm a dumb butt. Very cool, Janice. I'm not sure that I would have read that and thought, well, that must be our Janice Johnson. So I'm glad you spoke up and said that. Sweet. I'm going to, all right, right now while I'm here. I'll show you guys something else, how I make my little cards. I don't measure out those squares over and over and over again. You know those cutting mats you can get at, um, I think I got mine at Dollar Tree. Um, I cut the template, or stencil, you can call it whichever, um, out of one of those cutting mats with just an exacto blade. I measured it out so that it does measure two and a half by three and a half and it fits right on the card. So I can just line it up like that. Take my handy dandy pen and make the um, four square step out. I also made another one of these that has the six square the spacing is different, but yeah, so it has this six square template. So let's just do it. She shows it in six. I'm, I'm not sure that we need six. I think I can show myself how to do this in four. So I'm going to put the new design that I found in my book. And the first thing I always do is make myself a card. Okay, so she draws the border first. And again, there's no need for it to be very precise. Hi, Mina. All right, so I think I can double up on this one and this one this is so cool Janice So very cool. I'm not sure how I would in the end add to or shade on this one. I'll try and be more precise on the final one. Okay, she shows it with... Um,
shading on the side. So let's just go ahead and do that. Coolio. And then like she shows on here, when you draw it multiple times, how it looks like the continuation of the pattern. That is way cool. Tina, I'm right there with you. I was just talking about that a minute ago that I always doodled. And circles were always like my go-to. I could fill a whole page with circles. Another one that was my favorite that I actually thought me and one of my friends in sixth grade had made up was, I think it's called Knight's Bridge, but where you do a, um, and I love this in yellow and pink, but where you do a um, checkerboard with curved lines, I thought me and my friend Karen just made that up. But we used to draw that all the time. And then, you know, of course, shade. But we used to do it in color all the time. So, but that one is actually an official Zentangle. And I think it's called Knight's Bridge. So, and now I draw, do that on the back of my Hakea. He I wonder if I did that on this. Yep. I have to redraw it. Oh, well. Cool. Now I'm just feeling all happy that we figured out we know somebody all famous and stuff. All right. So we were actually going on to the last one in March, which was, I think it's called Irimon. 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 Um, this one I will draw out lines because I think... For the squares themselves, I think it's important. Where do I want to put it, though? Because I don't have much space left. All right, I'll just do it in this one down here. Let me see. And I'm just going to use this for the size of the squares, how big I want them. I'm going to use the edge. Okay, that'll work. You probably did. Someone else just beat you to naming the style. Who knows? The last tangle for March. Okay, on the um, Instagram list, <laughs> I've been putting it out since November. For however many days are in the month, I have been putting out these patterns. And I started this with all the March designs. Um, so that's the, this is the last one on the March list. And then I'll just go ahead and move on because here's the April list. And these lists are available, um, on my IG. Just go to my page or scroll back or whatever. Okay. We ready? This, this one's really simple, you guys. It's just a curved line. On each side of the box. And if the I usually just make the pattern go ahead and go off the page or, or fold underneath. Um, whatever's next to it. Oh, and that was another thing. I've got to do the shading around the boxes. Okay, so 
The first one is just the curved lines, and then inside the box, a diagonal line. Um, well, it won't matter. So that's pretty simple so far, right? And then on the, um, you can choose whichever one because it's going to be the same regardless. Um, but I usually draw so that I'm drawing toward myself rather than away from myself. I don't know why, but I just do. So I do half of the box at a time. So go ahead and echo the first curved line. And then from the corner, draw up and meet that line and just keep repeating that until you fill up the space available. And then again on the other side And it looks really, really intricate, and honestly, it's just repeating the same line over and over, but it ends up looking so cool. And I'm doing this one with a real fine nib only because I just picked up that pen. Um, but for this amount of space, it was probably a good choice in all honesty. Because if I use too wide a nib, the width of the nib would have taken up too much space and I wouldn't have gotten to repeat the pattern enough times to make it look way cool. So that's another consideration when you're um, deciding which pen to use. Just by mistake, I actually probably did myself a huge favor. All right, now this one, since it's going off the page, I have to think. I'll hold it up here in a second. Since I'm doing it with the really fine nib, it's probably hard for you to see. But I'll hold it up here in just a second. This one's going to look way cool shaded. There's another design. I can't think of the name of it. That's a lot like this one too. But this one's cool because it's almost like mirror imaged. And these are by no way perfect. The amount of space that I've left is inconsistent. The lines aren't straight. But when you get it done, it's just so darn simple. You, you can't even believe that it can look so detailed and intricate 
with so many flaws, but it does. I don't know why. And on the edges, just make it up as you go along. Cool. I really like that one. I'll hold it up where you can see it a little bit better. Sorry, I got a little close there. Paradox. That might be it, Jan. Arukas. I can't think of Arukas. But there is one that is really, really similar to this, and it's really nice. Now, this one... Now I'm going to go ahead and use this pencil because it's here. But this one I might use a little bit um, softer pencil lead to um, shade it because my other pencil isn't here. Oh, well. But this one you could shade so many different ways. I'm going to shade where they meet here in the middle. But you could shade each one of these little things where they meet, meet up too to give it like real depth if you wanted to um, go to that much trouble or even just use a gray pen because smear in the graphite on those little areas or if you drew it bigger you could I'm just going to shade it here where everything kind of comes together but it's, it's really almost screaming to have each one of those intersections shaded honestly Actually, if I was doing this um, to give away or just as more finished art, I probably would go and shade each one of those areas where they meet up. Only I would use the smaller tartillion to do it. So where each one meets up, it would look... I did it on that one. See how the shading just makes all the difference in the world? And it's hard because I don't have that um, clear picture. I think you're right, Jan and um, Janice. I think it is Paradox. And it is one of my favorite tangles, too. But yeah, I like that. It might be a little bit dark, and if it ends up being a little bit dark or whatever, you can always erase it or just pick up a little bit of the graphite so it's not so in your face. In your face. Thanks, CB. But yeah, that's a really, really fun tangle. I like that one a lot. All right now moving on to April I don't know it I think I've made oh no I already had this card so I've got to find it the next one is called make Rima I think and it's spelled M-A-K 
um, dash R A H dash M E E. And I know I have a card for it. And this one is also, it's just so pretty and so simple. You start out with the basic design of, um, it's called Kiko, I think. Kiko, yeah. And it, it looks more like a woven basket is what I, when you combined all, combine it all in one big area, it looks like a, um, well, well, here, much like this. But then rather than do one big area with it, you end it there and draw the ends of the lace or whatever it is. Um, but that this is just really, really a pretty pattern, I think. You found me on IG? Oh, great. Good, Barbara. It should just be my name. Yeah, if you just put Janet Merle. Now, there's another one that that um, fake account that uses my name and my picture. You guys, last I looked, it's still up. I have reported that. I can't even tell you how many times I have reported that channel or that person for having um, duplicated my account. It doesn't have my content. It just has, um, just uses my picture, my photograph of me and the cat and um yeah it really bugs me when people do that you know it's like what's wrong with your own face and you, you know i don't have like a gazillion followers they're just hacking it and being stupid yeah the the fake is still there but there are no posts yeah well what the hell is that about that I don't get. What what do they get out of that? Are they scamming people? That's See, that's the thing that scares me, is they're using my name and my image to try and scam people. So, anyway, that will get me going. All right, this one. All right, I'm going to draw this one. I think with... Um, um, plastic nib just because if I don't it's going to be too light and airy and this one is light and airy enough that's why I went to the opposite side of the page because I don't want two real light airy ones next to each other in fact I'm going to do it here in the because it's just not that intricate pattern I'm going to use this little square in the corner even though I love 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 the pattern that's a little note to myself that says, you're awesome. Not really. <laughs> All right. Simple stuff. We'll start on one edge so we can fit as many in as we want. Hoping you guys can see okay. Just... Curved lines, I usually do four. You can do more. You could do six. You could do whatever you want. And then on this one, if I was going to do a whole square of this, I'd just keep adding the things. But because this one's going to look like a knot, I'm going to go ahead and put an end on. And then anywhere on the design, just go ahead and um, draw the lace. This one I'll just loop back onto itself. And probably on this one, it, it does kind of make sense to try and keep the width of the lines about the same width as the design itself. You can't get your fake profile taken down and they took mine down for no reason, literally. Dee Dee was the, only, the one who talked me into making another profile. Really? Now, see, that just makes me mad. <laughs> CD's probably right. The tireless tangler right now is doing 100 days of Zen tangles, and I'm following her and trying to do them, but I never can do them all. Yeah, sometimes I get a little bit behind, and then I have to... Um, Just spend an evening or something catching up. 
just when I've got time. It's all good. But yeah, the, on this one, the thing I would pay particular attention to is um, keeping the width of the lines about the same. And then um, you can interweave them any way you want, right? If you planned ahead, you could make them go over and under and... See, that's so weird. Why would they take yours down? And they, I mean, I've reported that account so many times. I just don't want anybody getting scammed. That's the biggest thing for me. Because I just feel like everybody's out there, there's a scam a minute. And if Robert's phone is any indication, there's people out there just scamming like crazy. He gets so many scam calls. You got a new phone and accidentally created a second account. Found out you can't delete or merge accounts. That's crazy. You did it backwards. Good on you, Joycey. If you can do it backwards, I vote for you. This is another design that you could do something in the background real fun. I'm probably not going to, or if I do, I'll do it later. But it's just fun to draw. I haven't been on my Facebook account and oh, I don't even know when. And even when I go on... I just go on to see my nieces and nephews' kids. I've gotten out of all the groups that I was on. Yeah. And the only thing I ever did on Facebook was look at nieces and nephews and photos of the kids anyway. So, yeah, start with Kiko. You ended up with two on IG and they won't let me post on the first one. Weird. See, I don't, I don't understand it. They let me post on my original account, but I didn't do the second account. Somebody else did that. So I just don't get it. I, I just don't get it. That's funny because Didi and I were talking earlier about um, some of the things YouTube does. Um, you know, how much they promote your, allow promotion of your channel and stuff like that by suggesting um, your videos and how they mess with the analytics, it makes absolutely no sense. There may be method behind their madness, but boy, I sure don't get it. But if you're doing this for money, which I'm not, obviously, because, yeah. If I wanted money, I'd go get, like, a job. Because you're not going to get rich doing YouTube. Promise. Um... But yeah, I just don't understand some of the things they do because at the end of the day, it um, it ends up costing them, I would think. The problem is that it's AI disabling, not at, Yeah, I agree with you there, Tina. It's the algorithms that are doing it. 
But when it's not even in their own best interest, that's what I don't get is why would they implement something that goes against their own best interest at the end of the day? Makes no sense to me. But nobody asked me. That's the problem. They need to call me and ask me because I tell them how screwed up they are. And I wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> But I guess at the end of the day, we should all be thankful that we have the ability to get together like this, um, free to you guys, other than, you know, watching ads, which I don't mind watching the ads. Um, yeah, we should just be thankful. I should quit whining. Okay, I'm done whining for a while. Not Probably not all day, but for a while. I like to do what I'm good at. Okay, this is another one. It's gotten pretty busy. So in the back, I probably would take, and I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to force you guys to do it. I'll do the background later. But so that this all um, stands out, I probably will just do some quick cross hatching in the background so it turns it gray. I'll just do a little bit so you guys can see what ultimately it'll end up looking like. Because I can sit and do this cross hatching like forever. And I think it will, at the end of the day, make the design stand out a little better. And I'm not especially careful when I'm doing this either. And now that I'm this far along on the poster, and that, that probably is not going to work, but say I ended up with a square on here that I didn't like, that I thought was a distraction, I would put a label right on, I mean, a piece of white label paper right on top of that and do it again. Everybody needs a good wine. Yep, I'm good at whining. Really, Rachel, see, that would piss me off. <laughs> if I had a sister-in-law that did that, yeah, that would piss me off. Yeah, that's actually up close. I'm going to try and get it where you guys can see it. But I'm not sure that that crosshatch is a good fit for that design. So my bad. So maybe what I'll end up doing is drawing more of the laces and end up blacking in the background. I think that's probably the only way I'm going to get it to stand out so you can actually see what's going on. Probably. All right, let's try that. Because honestly, if I end up with something I don't like, you guys, I have no problem covering it up and moving right on down the road. I, I wouldn't live with some crap I didn't like. Get out the label material. And fix that bad boy right up. Wouldn't matter to me a bit. Yeah, I think I'm going to end up blacking it, doing the whole background black, but I'm not going to make you guys watch that. I'll just do enough just so you can see. And you guys, there's no rhyme or reason for how I'm picking out the designs that I put on the list. 
Um, yeah, no rhyme or reason at all. Yeah, I'm going to blacken the whole back out. You finish your coloring page. Yay, Brandy. Yeah, I think it gets fun when you start putting them together, Barbara. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, other than the ones that I've shown in the book, I don't think I have any other really good examples because most of the Zentangle that I've done, I've actually given away. This one I'm not giving away. It's going to go in my new binder. It's going to be the cover for my new binder. And I think for April, what I'm going to do with the remaining designs that don't go on this poster, um, I will make the little cards of the design and put it in the book because I ended up when I flip through the book I really really like those pages plus by darkening this background I can fix where I've goofed up okay that's all I'm gonna color so you guys can get an idea of what the black background is gonna make it look like so it's going to make the actual pattern itself stand out. So that corner is going to be really, really heavy with black. But if I find that it's too dark and I don't like it, um, I'll take my, like my white pen. And I'll just show you guys here. I might go over them, but... Did you guys know that if you write on your hand, your white pen will write really good? Um, I might go in and just put like dots in the background just to break up the black too. So if I end up really liking that, that's what I'll end up doing. I might like that actually rather than leaving it all black. Yeah. So if you goof something up, you can just always fix it. It's no big deal. All right, the next one is warts and wobbles. And I think I have a card for that one already out. Let's see. Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. And I don't remember it well enough might have to look it up if you hear noise in the background there's a great big rat in my kitchen got too many cards out you guys warts and wobbles maybe it's already in the book s-t-u-v-w Okay, this is a lot like one. I didn't realize that I chose some. Well, I don't really look at the designs when I'm doing it. I just look at things that look pretty to me. And um, that's what I go with. So this is warts and wobbles. An awful lot like what we've done. But I think it's really pretty. So where do we want this? Let's put it over here. Because it's going to be a little bit heavier weight, and this one is really lightweight. This one's going this way, so I'm going to do this one this way. So now you can see how there's no rhyme or reason for what the hell I do. I just do it and go, what? What? What did you say, Tina? What? All right. This one I'm going to do curved. I sometimes feel like I get too many straight lines because I am a straight line girl.
and I'm doing this bigger. Um, mostly because you guys are watching. If I draw too small, you guys miss a lot. And so a big rat in the kitchen. Um, that would be Robert Vaughn. I call him the rat. And for those of you that are new, um, the reason he got the name the rat Is because he's very rat-like. <laughs> but Robert had leukemia here. Oh, he's been out of treatment three years now. Did very well. We're very, very fortunate. And they treat leukemia with arsenic, which is rat poison. So while he was in treatment, and believe me, I took the leukemia seriously, even though I make jokes and stuff like that. I did take it very seriously. But they treat leukemia or his type of leukemia with arsenic. So um, I started out calling him Ratatouille because that's a rat, right? And pretty soon I had just shortened it to the rat. And he has remained the rat all these years now. But yeah, it was because of the arsenic that they were pumping into him. And he's done amazingly well, you guys. I don't be scared for Robert. He's his blood his last blood work was the best it's been since treatment. So three years out, he's good to go. And he's very ornery like a rat. Yep, big rat in my kitchen. Robert Vaughn. Robert Vaughn's the rat. He's a good rat, though. He's not stinky. See, this is kind of like a um, a doodle that I would have done in high school. Just adding on, drawing a line, adding on to it, drawing a line, adding on to it, until you got something that was pretty cool looking. I actually like this one. And none of these that I've done so far today are have been real conducive to um, shading. To give it depth. So that's kind of a bummer, but... When you go on the Tangle Pattern site, you'll see the ones that are just awesomely shaded. There's some really, really good ones out there. I would not like to be a, um, what do they call them? A certified Zentangler teacher, CRT or something like that. Um, I like doing it on here with you guys, but to travel and go do this, I would not enjoy that. You're so funny. Yeah, I thank God every day, Tina, that Robert Vaughn did well in the treatment. Um, I don't think we realized the day we ended up at OU Medical Center how precarious his situation was. But he was the oldest person they've ever treated at Oklahoma University Medical Center because most people with the type of leukemia he had, most people... Um, die before they get treatment. You literally bleed to death. So we were very fortunate. And honestly, one of Robert's friends probably saved his life because he was 
the day before we ended up at the hospital, um, he'd had a bloody nose that was, and Robert doesn't have bloody noses. He'd never had them that I was ever aware of or ever saw in 20 years. Um, but it was really, really hard to stop, which was really unusual. And then he got up in the morning and he said, I am peeing blood. And I was like, well, holy crap. You shouldn't play with it so hard. No, not really. I didn't say that to him. I was like, well, I'll call the urologist. So I got on the phone and his urologist was on vacation, wasn't available. And there was nobody else on, um, on call. He hadn't left an on call doctor. So he called one of his buddies and he was going to get the name of his urologist. Apparently they talk about stuff like that and they know they have them. I don't know. But anyway, and when he told Donnie what was going on, Donnie said, you need to get your ass to the hospital right now. Like, don't, don't dawdle. Get to the hospital right now. So we packed up and went to the um, emergency room. And they started doing tests. And it was just like we were there longer and longer and longer and longer. And um, they just came back and kept getting more and more and more blood. So the longer you're sitting there, the more you're thinking, oh, this, this can't be good. You know, like, this can't be good. It's not kidney stones because there was no pain. That was another thing. My initial thought was it's got to be kidney stones or something. No pain. So it's just like, oh, my gosh. And then, lo and behold, later on in the day, they came in and said, we don't know what kind of leukemia you have, but you have leukemia. We need to get you transferred to a, a medical uh, learning school. CB, Jack! If this wasn't you, your site, we would have to delete your comment. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. I just say what you guys are thinking. So don't even go there with me. So, yeah. So, um, they had to determine what kind of leukemia it was to start treatment, right? Because there's several different kinds of leukemia. Um, some are harder to treat than others. And so, um, They just started pumping him full of blood is really all they could do. And giving him platelets. I can't remember that night if they gave him whole blood or platelets. But anyway, yeah, it was the next day before we could actually leave Joplin and get to um, OU Medical Center. And then it was that night before they actually determined what leukemia they were treating and they said you're so lucky because most people die before they get to the hospital they literally stay at home and let themselves bleed to death that's it tina they were looking for everything they were testing and retesting and retesting and um do you want to hear the really stupid crazy thing now robert and i are adults that have lived to maturity but when I got to the hospital that morning, I honestly thought that it was going to be not that big a deal, right? Um, I didn't realize that the induction therapy for that was 40 days minimum. And um, so I packed clothes for a couple of days because we thought originally we were going to Kansas City and we ended up down at... Um, Oklahoma City at OU rather than Kansas City State or Kansas University. Um, but when I shot, showed up at the hospital in the morning, Robert said they want to send me to OU in an ambulance. He said, I'm not, I'm not going in an ambulance. He said, you can drive me. And I was like, well, why, do, why an ambulance, you know? Because he was up and about. He was fine. He was dressed. Everything was, 
and neither one of us, I think, began to understand um, what we were dealing with, right? So he had to sign a waiver. We got in the car and proceeded to drive to Oklahoma City, which is about a four-hour drive from Joplin. And we're stopping and letting him use the restroom, and he's just peeing blood the whole way. And we had no clue that with his type of leukemia that most people bleed out before they get treatment. And he's just pissing away blood. I'm not sure that an ambulance could have done anything, though, either. Oh, crap. You know what? All right. Talking away, not paying attention. I do want that outline. So, yeah, anyway. No, we were so blessed, so fortunate. Honestly, there isn't a day goes by that I don't thank God for sparing the rat. Because he actually is worth it. I'm going to erase that shading that I just did because I don't, I wanted this outline. So sometimes in life you're just darn lucky. That was one of those times for us, for sure. Yeah, he was bleeding internally the whole way. If I had had, honestly, because I had come home to get some stuff, if I had had any, any idea how precarious he was, I would have said, baloney, you're going in an ambulance. I don't care if it costs you $100,000, you dope. But I, neither one of us had any idea. And he would have been the same way. He didn't understand how precarious he was. But then after he got there and they told him what was going on, he said, I'm not going to get treated. You know, I'm not going to do the treatment. He thought it was going to be horrible because, of course, cancer, the first thing you think is, you know, the treatment can be worse than what you're dealing with. So he's not going to get treatment. It was like, you don't have a choice, buddy. But it was brutal treatment, 40 days in the hospital and then another 10 months of daily treatment. So it, it was brutal treatment. See, Joycey, he puts up with me. He is a saint. He even goes and gets me coffee every day, CB. I know. What the hell is the matter with that man? Okay. I think I've, I'm just kidding him. I, I tell him every day um, how absolutely lucky, lucky he is that he gets to even hang with me. And when he forgets, I remind him, just, you know how lucky you are? Duh. I don't like this one on this, but as a border, this is a really a cool pattern. Actually, the time in the hospital. An idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. An idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. Um, the time in the hospital after the initial treatment got going. Um, 
was pretty much easy for us because they let him, Robert never put on a hospital gown the whole time he was there. He said, I'm not going to dress in pajamas. I'm, I'm not going to sit here in pajamas. So he wouldn't put on their hospital gown. And he just wore his regular street clothes, no matter what. But we walked. He hated that hospital so bad, but they would let us leave the hospital. So we walked, and we walked, and we walked. I'm not kidding. We walked miles a day. One time, I shouldn't tell this because we're really bad. We're really bad people. Um... They didn't give us any limitations for how far we could walk. Robert one day said, I want to go for a ride. So we literally got in the car and um, we went sightseeing. <laughs> and it was just like, okay, if we get in an accident and you get hauled back to the hospital, how do we explain <laughs> that you're already a patient? <laughs> like, yeah, just put me back in room 721. I'm already a patient. But we made it. It was all doable. Good memories. Anyway, it's 10 minutes of three. I still have, what, three, four, five squares. This will be done before you see it again, I promise you. I'm not crazy about that one, but it would have been better if I'd have drawn it smaller but I, I tried to make it where you guys could actually see stuff. So, anyway, I'm not going to start another one because I can't finish it. But congratulations to Mindy. I will, um, I'm going to write myself a note right now. I will get on and send you a gift card. I don't know, Mindy, if I have your email, but that's what I'm going to need to get the gift card to you. That ain't bad. That was probably so good for his state of well-being. See, that's what we thought, too, that, you know, we could either go crazy there or we could do things that made it better for everybody. So, yeah. And, and I have to say the hospital was so good because he bitched about the food constantly. Um... They finally just let him go down to the cafeteria or order from the cafeteria so he could eat. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's the thing right there. Oh, one other thing. Um, here where the boxes overlap. Just so that ultimately the entire um, poster will have some depth. I shade it I'll smear it here in a minute around the frames And then it just looks way cooler, I think. But then I would. So, yeah, I'm going to go fix us some ham to eat since we didn't get ham yesterday. And I will be back next Monday. And I'll, I'll put together some... Um, rules and stuff for the ATC Zentangle swap, okay? But yeah, let's go ahead and do that because that sounds fun to me. 
yeah, it is. Hospital food is awful. Awful, awful. But I have to say, they did have like a, a fruit and cheese platter. And I have to say, that was the best thing on the menu. And it was the best thing um, even from the cafeteria. Like they bring up, it was just a great big plate of fruit. So every morning for breakfast, um, and he could honestly order as much as he wanted. Um, I'd usually have him get toast and yogurt and then a cheese tray or the fruit, fruit tray. And then we'd have fruit all day long. So it, it was really not a horrible experience. I can't complain. At the time... We thought it was, but in reality, it was not. It was life-saving. So, all right. Before I put this in the book, I will make sure that all the shading is done right. But, yeah, I'm liking it. This pattern I like a lot, too. That one's really pretty. And I did good on it. So, that one's pretty, too. Anyway, um... Thanks for hanging with me today. Um, yeah, by next Monday, I'll have um, I'll have all the rules for the ATC swap put together. So you guys go have a great afternoon, and thanks for hanging with me. And um, yeah, gotta go. Love you guys. Hi, Joan. Bye, Joan. Anybody else I miss? Love you. See you later. Bye.